Hi, I'm Lily, and I'm about to tell you a story about all the challenges life threw at me. My parents weren't caring or loving. They constantly fought and took their anger out on me. They also often threw parties, so there was always all sorts of people in our house. The noise from the parties kept me awake all night, and I often went to bed with headphones in. In elementary school, I did aerial gymnastics, and I dreamed of becoming a circus performer. One day, my parents woke me up in the middle of the night and demanded I entertain the guests. I need to get up early for school tomorrow. Don't you dare argue with me, you ungrateful girl. As you can see, life wasn't easy. Mom and Dad spent all their money on drinks. They didn't buy me any toys, and there was often nothing to eat at home. Sometimes they would get so mad at each other it would scare me, and I would hide from them in a treehouse or go to my best friend Kenny. We met in kindergarten. I'd been crying because I was the only child whose parents hadn't come to see our play. Then, Kenny came up to me and gave me his plush kitten to cheer me up. His name is Meow. He's magical. If you hug him tight, Meow will take away your sadness. Ever since that day, Kenny and I were as inseparable as two Oreo wafers. My friend was a ray of light in my life, and I liked coming over to his place. After all, Kenny had a perfect family. His dad was a cop and often drove us around in his police car, and his mom treated me to awesome pies. Sometimes I wished I was their daughter. At home, I felt unwanted. When I was 15, my aerial gymnastics coach suggested I take part in a competition in another state. I was over the moon and asked my parents for money for the road. They just <laughs> laughed in my face. Get it through your head. You're a loser and you won't achieve anything in life. We're not going to spend money on your stupid dreams. What a terrible thing to say. I wanted to prove them wrong. I stole the keys to dad's car to go to the competition. Unfortunately, my plan failed miserably because I didn't know how to drive and hit the first hydrant I came across. Dad loved his pickup truck more than he loved me. He didn't even ask if I was all right and just went ballistic when he saw the state of his precious car. His eyes turned red like a werewolf's and he shouted that he would lock me in the basement for a month. I got really scared and couldn't think of anything better to do than run away from home. Kenny urged me not to do it, but I didn't listen to him. After all, he had a happy family and had no idea what it was like to live with monsters. I threw my clothes into my backpack, grabbed my toy kitten, and went to my Aunt Julia. She wasn't happy when she saw me on her doorstep, but let me stay. Although, she wouldn't even give me a room in her huge house. You can sleep in the hallway, Leslie. I'm Lily. Who cares? I helped my aunt cook and clean around the house to thank her for letting me stay, but that wasn't enough for her. Aunt Julia was impossible to please. She wrote down everything I ate in a notebook. I'll bill your stupid parents when they finally come for you. Oh, I wish they would come to their senses and take me home, but they never even called me. Like they didn't care where I was. My aunt didn't hide how much my presence irritated her. Lily, I'm about to have some guests over. Sit on the porch for a couple of hours and don't bother us. Anyway, I got tired of being a burden, took my backpack and left. I wandered the streets like a stray kitten that nobody wanted. Of course, I could call Kenny, but that was too humiliating. By the evening, I was terribly hungry. I had no money and tried to steal a candy bar from a store but got caught. You little thief, I'm calling the police. I dropped the candy bar and ran away into an alley. Once there, I hid in a cardboard box. It soon got dark and started to rain. I was cold and scared as I hugged me out to my chest and tried to fall asleep. But then a policeman found me. I was afraid I would be sent to prison. Luckily, it was just Kenny's dad, Mr. Smith. Lily, did you try to steal a chocolate bar from a store? What are you doing here? I shouldn't have done that, but I was so hungry. I told him about everything that happened to me. When I finished, Mr. Smith sat me in the car. I was afraid he'd bring me to a police station, but to my surprise, he drove us to his house. Kenny's parents said I could stay with them until I made up with my parents. After all, they knew what my home life was like. They called mom and dad and told them where I was, but my parents didn't care. They didn't come for me either that day or the next. Don't be sad, Lily. You're safe here. That's how I came to live in their house. I even had my own room. Kenny's parents were amazing people. They took care of me and treated me like their own daughter. I loved them with my whole heart and considered them my family. Kenny and I were closer than ever. We would talk or play video games all night long. Several months passed that way. One day, we were messing around in the backyard. We got into a mock fight, fell on the lawn, and burst out laughing. Our hands touched, and we both turned red like tomatoes. I realized that Kenny had long been more than just a friend to me. You know, I've never been so happy before. 
I feel the same. I like to see you smile, and I also, I, I like you. And yet we had to hide our feelings because we lived together and everyone thought we were close like siblings. My parents seemed to have completely forgotten about my existence. I tried not to let that get me down. After all, I liked living with Kenny's family. I helped around the house because I didn't want to be a burden. I studied hard and worked as a waitress after school. I hoped life would always be that wonderful. However, a tragedy struck and changed everything. Kenny's parents died in an accident. It was a terrible blow for us. I grieved like they really were my parents, and I tried to be there for Kenny. I know you feel awful now, but we'll get through this together. Thank you for being there for me, Lily. We hugged and swore that we would always be together. And then, we sat on the roof and talked until the morning. Unfortunately, fate wasn't on our side. The next day, Kenny's grandmother said that the miner could not live alone and would be staying with her. Soon, they moved to another state. Lily, someday we will meet and never part again. After that, I was completely alone. I had no one but my toy now. Of course, at first, Kenny and I kept in touch and called each other every day. However, he started a new life at the new place. We talked less and less often until one day, my phone was stolen. We lost all contact after that. By that time, I had already graduated from high school and was preparing for college exams. I kept working part-time and moving from place to place. Some of my relatives and acquaintances let me stay the night. I even lived in an orphanage for a few months until I turned 18. Of course, I thought about going back to my parents. Deep inside, I hoped that they'd miss me and were worried. One day, I even came to my old house and was about to knock. But then I looked into the window and saw that there was a party in full swing inside. My parents were having fun with people I didn't recognize once again. It was time to face the truth. Mom and Dad were doing just fine without me. I turned around and left. I got another job and became a pizza delivery girl. As I was passing by my old house during one of my shifts, I saw that other people were living there now. It seemed my parents had moved. Life wasn't easy, but I didn't even think about giving up. I worked hard and managed to get into a good college. I'd long forgotten about my dream of becoming a circus performer. Now, I was going to become an economist and start a business. While I was a student, I took whatever jobs I could find. Eventually, I earned enough to buy an old car. It could barely drive, and its doors kept falling off. But I finally had a place where I could sleep and prepare for exams. Soon I was able to rent a small apartment with a gorgeous view of the city dump. Check this out, meow. Do you like our new home? I know it's not a penthouse, but it's something, right? <laughs> Things were finally looking up. Slowly but surely, I was moving towards success. I thought about finding my parents again, but by that point, I hadn't heard anything about them in several years. I didn't even know if they were still alive. One day I was walking to the parking lot after a lecture, lost in thought, when I saw Ethan, a classmate of mine, scowling at his car. You damn tin can, why won't you start? He noticed me and smiled sheepishly. Don't mind me, it's just that I'm late for my band's rehearsal and my car broke down again. We laughed and I offered him a ride. As I drove, we got to talking. It turned out that Ethan and I had a lot in common. He'd also run away from home and currently had nowhere to live. I knew what it was like to be homeless, so I decided to help him out. You can spend the night in my apartment if you aren't afraid of cockroaches. You're a godsend, Lily. Thanks. That evening, he came to my place. Huh? However, he wasn't huh? alone. Wait, this isn't what we'd agreed on. Come on, these guards are from my rock band. We have pizza and chips, it will be fun. Maybe I was overreacting. I could use some fun. That's how I made new friends. We threw parties and had fun until the morning every day. My academic performance started to suffer and I was even threatened with expulsion. Not only that, but I was also fired for ditching work. Even that didn't make me slow down. Soon my new friends lost all shame. They lived with me but didn't pay any bills or buy food. One day, I looked at the mess after one of our parties and realized with horror that I was turning into my parents. That made me come to my senses. I decided it was time to get my act together. The first thing I did was throw my friends out. They were only hanging out with me to have a place to stay at. Get out, you freeloaders. I need to study. Ugh, you're such a bore. Let's go, guys. I focused on my studies, trying to make up for lost time. Then I started to look for a new job because rent was coming up. I came across a poster about a circus looking for acrobats. I immediately called them. After all, I still remembered a couple of my moves from my aerial gymnastics classes. The pay was good, but they wanted me to perform without a safety net or any help. It was extremely dangerous. However, after everything I had been through, I wasn't afraid of anything anymore. I felt like a cat with nine lives. Besides, I always had Meow with me and believed it would keep me safe. 
But one day, luck turned its back on me again. I spent all night studying for the exams and hardly slept. When I was doing a stunt with a ring of fire during the next show, I wasn't careful enough and fell. I came to in a hospital. Everything hurt, but what pained me the most was my thoughts. Why couldn't things just go right for once? I hugged my toy to my chest and burst into tears. Then a young doctor walked into the ward and I couldn't believe my eyes. Kenny, is it really you? He recognized me too. He ran up to me and hugged me tight. Lily, my Lily, I've been looking for you for years. It turned out that he had graduated from medical college and moved back to the city to do an internship at the hospital. After so many difficult years, we finally met again. At that moment, I knew everything was going to be all right. And I was right. Kenny and I soon became an item. We got married as soon as I graduated from college. Let's fast forward a couple years. See the mansion and gorgeous car? They were ours. I became a successful businesswoman and set up a company. And my husband was now a talented young surgeon. Soon we opened a family medical center and I was even interviewed by the Forbes magazine. My life was like a wonderful dream. But of course, that couldn't last forever. Kenny and I really wanted to have a baby, but it turned out that I couldn't have children. When I found out about it, I cried for days on end. Kenny tried to comfort me, but even that didn't help. Don't worry, honey, we'll figure something out. All of a sudden, Aunt Julia called me and asked me to lend her some money. I'm sure you remember how kind I was to you when I let you live with me. It's time to return the favor. My aunt had never once asked how I was doing over the years and only called now that she found out I was rich and successful. But I didn't get mad at her and agreed to help her. We met and Julia told me my parents were alive. She even gave me their new address. I spent a long time thinking whether I should visit them or not. In the end, I decided that it was time to make up with them. I wanted them to know they were wrong. I wasn't a loser and I accomplished a lot. I arrived at their new address and was okay. lost for words. They lived in a terrible old house that was practically falling apart. Mom and Dad were watching the TV. When they saw me, they weren't happy at all. Look what the cat dragged in. What the hell do you want? Get lost, you're not our daughter. Do you know what I did? I smiled calmly and left. I finally realized that I shouldn't look back. My parents were terrible people, and it was time to leave them in the past. But then I saw a sad girl about five years old sitting on the porch. What's your name, honey? Miley? It turned out that she was my sister. I didn't know about her because I hadn't talked to my parents in years. I recognized my young self in her. It was obvious that mom and dad didn't care about her either. That's when I realized why fate brought me there. I bought Miley ice cream and then I went to my car and gave her my kitten meow. It's a magical kitten and it will bring you good luck. I promise your life is going to change soon. Kenny liked my idea. In a few months, we were able to adopt Miley. Our family was finally complete. I've had ups and downs, shed tears of grief and joy, but I am proud to say that I am self-made. Now I have a wonderful life and a happy family. I deserve it. And I know that no matter what's ahead of us, we'll get through it all together.